something new that I'm starting. I would not be making travel videos for some time. Nothing has changed. I still love travel and have so many amazing places to show you. But I realized there are a few things, just a few, that matter more than travel as of now. And that few things, there's actually just one thing. Mental health awareness. Mental health should be accessible to everyone, but not everyone can afford it as of now. Even your health insurance covers life harming accidents, but not life harming depression. A psychiatrist would charge you anywhere between 500 to 2500 for just one hour. Now that's a lot of money to pay. And that's one thing that keeps people from actually going to a psychiatrist. But here's the solution. Over the years, I've interacted with a lot of psychiatrists, counselors, psychologists. By the way, they are not the same. So I've interacted with a lot of mental health professionals. And here's something I've found in common. They all recommend CBT before medication. Now, I'm not saying that you should not go to a professional. After all, they are the professionals. But this CBT is something they will anyway follow. So there is a CBT for every mental disease. There is a CBT for depression. There is a CBT for OCD. And the good thing is, this CBT is something that you can do on yourself. CBT in simple words is what we call counseling. Your counselor does your CBT when they talk to you. Your conversations, the analysis, the homework they give you, the suggestions they make, it's all CBT. In fact, if you get a good psychiatrist and your condition is not extreme yet, your psychiatrist will straight up tell you to do your own CBT. A psychologist needs two sessions just to ask you questions and you'll be answering them so that they can understand you. And for those two sessions, you'll just be paying them to get to know you better. So if budget is the biggest constraint for you, you should do your own CBD. And I've decided that I'm going to make a series of videos to help you understand how you can do your own CBD. You can call it DIY counseling and every day I'll be posting a CBD video for another mental disorder. And I'll also be making the video in Hindi so that language is not a constraint and you can share it with people who speak Hindi and they can help themselves too. In the very first video, we'll be talking about obsessive compulsive disorder. So, so there are two parts. You have obsessions and those obsessions make you act compulsively. So let's say if you're afraid of losing a friend, what do you do? You become a better friend. You try to improve yourself, you try to improve your relationship, but no, that's rational. OCD is the trick your mind plays on you into doing irrational things which are not even related to that. So for example, if I'm really scared of losing a friend, instead of working towards my relationship, I would be sure that picking one of these pins is going to decide the future of our friendship. I would tell myself that if I pick this pin, something wrong is going to happen to my best friend and if I pick this pin, they will be fine. So obviously, I'll end up picking this pin and I'll feel better. I'll not feel the guilt if something wrong happens. The fear of losing them will go away. I'll feel better in the moment. If we really think about it, your best friend staying in your life is not going to be decided by which pin you pick or how many times you switch things on and off or, or which color you see next. But that's the trick your mind plays on you when OCD strikes. OCD is a trick that your mind plays on you and suddenly you start asking what if and slowly that what if takes over all of the things you do and it makes you set patterns that you know don't make sense but you're still asking yourself what if I pick this pen what if I don't switch on the light 10 times in a row will something wrong happen to me what if I don't jump from the bus what if I see the number three what if I see the color red what if there are three letters in the word I type but not four? You suddenly start counting your number of words you type in every text because your mind tells you, hey, an even number of words is good but an odd number of words means something bad will happen. And so you end up doing everything as your OCD tells you. And the thing is, the older OCD gets, the more intense it gets. 
there comes a stage when a person even refuses to go outside their house when they refuse to meet new people when they keep on cleaning their body because they're so afraid OCD gives you weird rules rules that don't really exist in the society or the world around you but rules that exist only in your own head and there are more reasons why OCD is bad and the catch is there is so much anxiety attached with an obsession that every time you have that thought you just want to release that anxiety so what do you do you end up picking that pen which would not kill your family you end up picking that bottle which would save you from an earthquake you end up skipping two blocks in the line even if you may fall yourself and that fear reaches that point where you can no longer control your own mind because even though you know what you're doing is not logical it's gone beyond the point where you can control it so today's video is going to be about the CBT for OCD So the first step in doing your own CBT is doing your SWOT analysis. I don't believe in wasting people. <laughs> I don't believe in wasting paper, so we'll do it on a whiteboard. So the first thing you do is you make a grid. La la la. This one is S W O T. S stands for strength, W for weakness, O for opportunities, and D for threats. Now I'm going to write one point in each but when you do your own SWOT analysis you have to write five point in strength five in weakness five in opportunities and five in threats Now let's start with the one point in my strength What is my strength Strength, 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 strength. Talented. What? I script, edit, and voice these videos all on my own. And that's okay, it all gets balanced out because I'm super lazy. So now when we move on to opportunity, your opportunity is something which is looking good in your life at the moment or something you want to work on. Uh so my opportunity right now would be working on my YouTube channel and make it grow. And you can help me in that by subscribing. Just saying. Your threat would ideally be not an ideal thing and something that is not going good in your life. So my threat would be bad time management. Your threat is essentially something negative that's happening in your life and your opportunity is something good that is about to happen or is happening in your life. So your threat is always something that stems from your weaknesses. For example, I am lazy. So someone who's lazy does not give enough time to the right things which leads to bad time management. And this brings us to the conclusion that you are the person who makes your own threats. If you think about it, you are also the person making your own opportunities because like I said, I'm multi-talented which will help me grow my channel, right? Which is my opportunity. So, like a wise person once said, you make your own success and you make your own failures too. Ooh, who said that? <laughs> So every week on one particular day which you can decide on your own you have to do your SWOT analysis and see if your threats are converting into opportunities if your weaknesses are converting into strengths now this was the first part of your CBD but the second part is a little more interesting and the second part is called dear diary now this is a part where the whiteboard won't help but i still don't want to waste paper so i'm going to explain to you what you have to do you have to buy a diary that's first then you have to make three columns on it in the first column you have to write thoughts in the second column you have to write emotions and in the third column you have to write behavior now in the thoughts category you will write now let's say i ask you to give me a pen and your ocd kicks in 
You're confused which pen should you pick. You've labeled one pen as the one that will save your life and the other pen that could kill you any minute now. So you'll write all of that down in the thought process. You have to explain your story. In the emotion column, you have to mention how that thought makes you feel. If you feel scared when that thought comes, write it down. If you feel stressed, write it down. You have to identify your emotion and write it down. In the behavior column, you write down what did you do after this thought came into your head. Let's say you ended up picking the pen that was safe. Now you write down here, I picked the safe pen. And then again, you make a sub column and let's say you wrote the thought here, the behavior here. You write the first emotion here and the second emotion here. So, so how did you feel after picking the safe pen? Did you feel relieved? Did you feel a little better? Write it down in this column. So similarly, you have to write down all your observations in this diary and you have to mark the date on any column of the page. You don't need me to tell you that. Just make sure you write down the date because we want to monitor your regular growth. After one week of just noting down your obsessions, now you have to rank them. The one that comes the most in your mind is the most frequent one. But how would you find out which one comes the most and how would you remember it? That's why we have the fourth column, frequency. In the frequency column, every time you get this particular thought, you have to put one strike in front of it. Second strike for the second time you have the thought. So at the end of the second week, you would know which thought frequency you the most. Now that's the most frequent thought and that's the one we'll start not with. This is the biggest mistake a lot of patients suffering from OCD make. They think they will attack the most frequent thought first and they will destroy it. But you have to understand, the most frequent thought is most probably the oldest one too. It has taken years to set in your head, so it won't go that easy. So we start with the one at the bottom of the list that we seldom get. We break that thought the first and gain the confidence to go higher up. But remember, you have to go from the lowest to the highest. Now how do we break that thought? Remember how we made the emotion and behavior list? You've narrated the whole scenario. How it happens, your friend asks you to give a pen, you wonder which pen would be safe, this one could lead to an earthquake, this one would mean you live for 2000 years. Now you have to deliberately pick the pen that would give you the earthquake. By picking that pen, you're saying no to your OCD. So here's a little brief of everything we've discussed. Week one, you're just going to write down your thoughts, how they make you feel, how they make you behave. From the second week, we start ranking those thoughts. In the third week, we start breaking the thoughts by attacking the least frequent one. So you pick the pen that feels risky. You choose the more anxiety giving scenario and remember this when you start your CBT your anxiety may increase for some time which is why you need to watch my CBD for anxiety video also because anxiety is a huge part of OCD and as your older thoughts older rules start breaking you will feel more anxiety but you should know that this is perfectly normal and just because you're feeling so much anxiety, it should not stop you from doing your CBT regularly. So, write down your behavior. I picked the riskier pen. I refused to jump two blocks. I did not switch the light on 10 times. And then you write down in the emotions column how it made you feel. Did it make you feel more anxious? Did you feel more scared? But then, comes the part where you wouldn't be using the diary, you would just observe for yourself if choosing the riskier option made any difference to your regular life. If choosing the riskier option actually led to an earthquake or did you actually lose your friend. Obviously these are unrelated events. And that's kind of like the whole point of the second step, which wants you to believe that your fear is not always the outcome of what you do. And this brings us to the third step, which says, there's a lot that you can do by staying busy. You will see that you have more obsessions, more fears, and more compulsive behaviors when you're sitting free. So what we're trying to do is, we're trying to make you more busy. 
Now you have to find out what makes you happy and what you want to do. But the key is to stay occupied in doing that. So basically you can just pick up new hobbies, you can go and meet old friends, you can start cooking classes, you can learn guitar, whatever you want as long as you're busy. Now how this works is there are two types of stress. The first one is de-stress, the bad one. You don't, you don't want to know about this one. The second one is the one that's going to help us when we fight OCD. This one's called eustress. And you get this one when you're doing things you love. Now, what is eustress? We'll cover that in the next video. But all you have to know is staying busy really helps. After you've done your SWOT analysis every week, and you've done your Dear Diary daily, and you're also staying busy doing things you love, now you can start to assess if the therapy is working. If you're on the beginning stages of OCD, your problem should be solved by 25 to 40% after the very first month of doing it regularly. The key word here is regularly. If you've done it regularly for a month and you don't see any major improvements, I recommend you go and consult a mental health professional. They should be able to help you. But even if you have to see a professional, your pre-done CVT would help you a lot because the counselor would at least need two sessions just to get to know you better. If you have the hierarchy of your obsessions, their rankings done in place, it would help them help you faster. But most importantly, just remember at any given time that you are the one who made your fears. You are the one who made them so you can destroy them also. And you will win over OCD. So if you know anyone who's suffering from the same problem, just share the link with them. I've also made a Hindi video, you can share that one too. And if you're someone who's suffering from OCD, you now know what to do. And the next video will be on CBD for depression. Stay tuned and stay strong. Bye-bye.